Hi there! Welcome to the Global Debate and Public Policy Challenge, in short, GDPPC. In this webinar, we're going to talk about how to structure your policy paper. This applies to both Task 1 and Task 2. Before we begin, take out some pen and paper. Feel free to pause the video now and then so that you can take down some notes. Ready? Let's go! So here's what we're going to cover in this webinar. We're going to be brief here, so make sure you check out the writing guidelines for an even more comprehensive overview on structure. First, we're going to start with the basics. The information header. This is some really important information that you need to include on the first page of your paper. And you'll see what we're talking about in just a minute. Second, we'll take a look at the grading rubric and what the requirements are for structure. Third, we're going to walk you through some really important things about how to structure your paper. Fourth, we'll take a look at how the layout should look like. And finally, we're going to wrap up with a quick summary of everything that we will have just covered. So let's start with the information header. This is an example of a policy paper, and we're looking at the very first page. As you can see here, on the top left of the first page, there should be six lines containing the following information. If you want to use a different design, that's fine. But keep in mind that all the information has to be there. First, your GDPPC ID. If you've already registered on the website, you should have a unique GDPPC ID, and this has two alphabets and five digits. This is how we identify you and your submission, so it's really important. Second, tell us who your paper's addressing. This usually refers to the government of the country that you choose. Third, tell us who your paper is being issued by. Depending on the task, this is the perspective that you are asked to represent. Fourth, you have to tell us which scenario you're responding to. Remember, you can only choose one scenario. Put a date on your paper, and finally, include your word count. This is excluding the bibliography. This table is the grading rubric that our judges are going to use to grade your paper. It can also be found in the writing guidelines, which you should really take some time to read very carefully. In this webinar, we're going to focus on the structure category. In case you're wondering, the criteria for structure is the same for both task 1 and task 2. So let's take a close-up look at the structure category. All papers are graded out of 100 points. And as you can see here, the structure category makes up 20 points. This is an easy 20 points for you to get if you do it right. And we're going to talk about some of the most important things you need to do to get as close to full points as possible. So listen closely. First, your paper should have all the structural elements. And we're going to go into more detail on this in the next slides. Second, your paper should be presented in a coherent order. This means that your arguments should have a logical flow so that the reader can easily follow what you're saying. Third, make sure all the different parts of your paper are well balanced. For example, don't spend three paragraphs on defining the problem and then just one paragraph on all your recommendations. Try to spend an equal amount of time on each part of your paper, otherwise the content will appear to be unbalanced. It's not enough that your content is logically organized. You should also try to present it in a visually appealing way. How can you do that? Use formatting tools. This means you should try to use bold, italics, underline, bullet points, and so on in your text to make sure that your paper is as easy to read as possible. We'll spend a little bit more time on this later. So let's talk about structural elements and let's start with the title which is the first thing that your reader is going to see. This is an opportunity to make a good first impression, so you should really try to spend some time thinking about it. Your title should tell the reader exactly where you're going, catch the reader's attention, and stick in the reader's mind. Here's an example of a title. I'm going to read it out loud. Syrian Censorship, Canada's Opportunity to Champion Digital Freedoms. Here's another example, the sword and the shield, the need for balanced universal norms for the World Wide Web. After reading these two titles, which paper would you be more interested in reading? Think about it. Now let's go into the main part of your paper. Whenever you write a paper, it's really helpful to think about it in three parts. The introduction, the body, 
and the conclusion. Let's begin with the introduction. The introduction is the first and maybe even the second paragraph of your paper. Here, you need to describe the problem and outline your key message. Like the title, this is where you should really try to catch the reader's attention. You want the reader to be interested in reading the rest of your paper. Now let's talk about the body. This is where you should really develop your arguments. You need to analyze the problem in context of the scenario and the country you've chosen. Propose a number of policy recommendations in response to the problem. And remember, quality is better than quantity. It's better if you spend more time developing a few recommendations, making them really specific, than providing a long list of recommendations without going in depth. Explain the impact that your recommendations will have on various stakeholders and consider the limitations of what you're saying. You can do this by acknowledging counterarguments and rebutting other policy alternatives. Finally, no paper is complete without a conclusion. This is where you should briefly reinforce your key message, drive home the urgency of the situation, and make a memorable finish. This is just a suggested outline. You may want to approach the structure of your paper differently. But what we're really looking for is overall coherence and a logical progression of ideas. As long as you have these elements in your paper, you should be doing quite fine. Now let's talk about the layout, which is how you should visually present your paper. A policy brief needs to deliver information as clearly and as quickly as possible. So you want to make sure that all sections are really easy to locate on every page. Using a good layout helps the reader to follow what you're saying. And more than that, you'll find that it also helps you to organize your thoughts. Overall, a good layout should really help your arguments flow. How can you do this? Use some layout tools. Here are four techniques that you can use to visually organize your paper. We're going to walk you through section headers, text formatting, bullet points, and graphs and tables. This is an example of a policy paper that makes really good use of an organized and presentable layout. You immediately see what the different parts of the paper are because there are clear section headers. Not only that, these section headers have been numbered, so you immediately know how many parts there will be to read. This paper also emphasizes key messages in each paragraph by using bold text. This is really helpful when there is a lot of text to read. If the reader doesn't have a lot of time, he or she will be able to skim the parts that have been highlighted and still get a pretty good idea of what the paper is about. You can also use italics or underline if you prefer. Whenever you have a list of ideas, you may also want to consider using bullet points. Bullet points draw attention to important information within a document so that a reader can identify the key facts and issues really quickly. Finally, using a diagram, graph, or table can really help to strengthen your analysis and explanation. How do you choose what kind of diagram or table to use? Well, that really depends on the type of information that you want to share. You should only include diagrams if they are relevant and appropriate. A rule of thumb is to keep your diagrams and tables as simple as possible. And in the case of this paper, you see that the diagram and the table have been put to good use. So just to wrap up, here's what we've talked about in this webinar. Don't forget to include your information, that is, your GDPPC ID, the country you're addressing, scenario, and so on, on the first page. The header will make sure that you are on track, and it'll make it a lot easier for the judges to get started with your paper. Be creative and come up with an eye-catching title. Make sure that you have all structural elements in your paper, introduction, body, and conclusion, and make sure that your arguments have a logical flow. And finally, use a clear layout to visually organize your paper. And that's it for this webinar. Remember, structure makes up 20 points of your total score, and this is an easy 20 points for you to get if you do it right. There's a lot more information on this in the writing guidelines, which you can download from the GDPPC website. Thanks for watching, and good luck!